What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein. Today, we're going to talk about the masked character forever tormenting herself at the bottom of a prison. A character whose backstory is wrapped in mystery, the lost sinner. At the end of the Lost Bastille lies one final structure, Sinner's Rise. Sinner's Rise is aptly named, as at the bottom lies the lost sinner, who eternally punishes herself for the sins of her past. She wears garments to inflict pain upon herself, and her dried blood can be found along the ground of her chamber. Along the ground are various messages, presumably carved by the sinner herself. Her penal set describes just what sort of torture she inflicts upon herself. The spikes of the mask pointing inwards suggest that this was not only used to bind prisoners, but to torture them as well. The tightly cinched belt of the jacket presses against the waist. Her handcuffs are used as a device to restrict use of the hands, and a tattered skirt is worn in shame by the guilty. By now, no one knows who this was used to punish, or for what reason. So who is the lost sinner, and what were her sins that she's eternally punishing herself for? Upon meeting the lost sinner, players from Dark Souls 1 will recognize a certain creature crawling on her, which ends up crawling inside of her penal mask. This is the exact same bug we see in Dark Souls 1 inhabiting the Bed of Chaos, who would seem to be the Witch of Isolith. In Dark Souls 2, as I discuss in my story video, there is a major theme of great souls from the past being reborn with every new cycle of the flame. It would seem this bug is either the Witch of Isolith reborn, or one of the Daughters of Chaos survived, as defeating the Lost Sinner in New Game Plus rewards the players with the Old Witch Soul. Soul of the Ineffable. This once magnificent soul continues to exert influence over the land, even after the eons have reduced it to these remnants. I believe it's likely this is the Witch of Isolith reborn, as the soul itself seems to resemble that of the Witch of Isolith. Fighting the Lost Sinner New Game Plus also ties her to the Witch of Isolith, as halfway through the battle, pyromancers will come out of the windowed cells to attack players. Quelana was the mother of pyromancy, and the Witch of Isolith the godmother of pyromancy, so this makes sense. The Lost Sinner's storyline also resembles that of the Witch of Isolith, who tried to duplicate the first flame, creating the Bed of Chaos in its stead. Once, people tried to round up the undead and hide them away from the world. They thought that imprisoning the undead would solve the problem. They created a towering Bastille to contain them, but in the end, it did no good. The Lost Sinner lives deep within the Bastille. The fool, trying to light the first flame. To me, it seems as if the creature seems to possess the Lost Sinner, and after it enters into her, she immediately attacks the player. I believe the Lost Sinner acts as a vessel for the bug, who likely also controlled the Bed of Chaos. But is that all there is to the Lost Sinner? I believe we can devise more about her if we take a look at her surroundings. Next to Sinner's Rise stands Belfry Luna, and there seems to be a surprising number of correlations between Sinner's Rise and Belfry Luna. In order to understand the Lost Sinner, I think we first need to understand the history of Belfry Luna. Belfry Luna and Belfry Soul, located in the Iron Keep, are related to the Prince and Princess of Alkin and Ven. The bell belongs to the princess it do! A long, long, long time ago, the princess she made me, yes, just like so. To guard this bell for the prince's honor. Stay away, foul undead, or you'll be a goner. <laughs> Stay back, it belongs to the princess, it do. The bell keepers of Belfry Luna were created by the prince and princess, and to this day, the forbidden love of the prince of Alkin and the princess of Ven manipulates these marionettes. The twin bells symbolize the bond between the two lovers, who can never be united. The bell keepers are their eternal guardians, for that is their love, that is their curse. The bells themselves symbolize forbidden love, the bell keepers, their faithful guardians, ever ready to annihilate trespassers. I believe the Princess of Ven was located in Belfry Luna, and highly recommend checking out my Prince and Princess of Alkin and Ven lore video for more information on the two lovers. So, how does Belfry Luna relate to the Lost Sinner? Our first connection lies in the Belfry Gargoyles, the boss of Belfry Luna who can only be reached after ringing the bell. Upon reaching the Sinner's Rise bonfire, if the player has not killed these Belfry Gargoyles, one will angrily fly up and roar at the player, as if it is angry the player has reached Sinner's Rise. 
In Belfry Luna, we meet yet another sinner, that of a red phantom who invades the player, Vorgel the Sinner. Vorgel the Sinner guards the Bastille Key, which is the key to the cells of the Lost Bastille, and that of Sinner's Rise. In fact, this is the key that is needed in order to unlock the gates which allow the player to light up the room in which the lost Sinner resides, making the fight easier. Yet another connection lies within Sinner's Rise. Sinner's Rise and Aldia's Keep are home to the enhanced undead, undead who would seem to have been mutated by Lord Aldia and partially fused with that of a dragon. Yet in Sinner's Rise, and only in Sinner's Rise, these enhanced undead drop the Bellkeeper Shield and Bellkeeper Bow. This is the only way to find the Bellkeeper equipment, in Sinner's Rise, once again connecting Sinner's Rise to Belfry Luna. All of these connections lead me to believe that it's possible the Lost Sinner is, in fact, either the Princess of Ven or the Prince of Alken. The masculine shape of the character, as well as the beard, means it could be the Prince and all of the female associations are meant to be the bug, although I think it's likely the Princess. But what do you guys believe? Alright guys, that wraps up this lore video on the Lost Sinner. Do you think the Lost Sinner is the Prince of Alken or the Princess of Ven? Or alternatively, do you think I'm way off in my speculation? For more lore on the Prince and Princess of Alken and Ven, make sure to check out my lore video on just that, or my other videos relating to Dark Souls 2 lore. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace.